right. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today on another edition of Extreme Health Radio. I hope you're having a great day, whatever you're doing and uh, whatever you're up to out there. So this is ExtremeHealthRadio.com. My name is Justin, and we are currently broadcasting worldwide from sunny Southern California. I can't believe it. The, the technology is amazing these days. Last I checked, we we're in 42 countries, which is just awesome. So thank you for joining us. And currently, we're doing three shows a week on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, today is Friday, so happy Friday to you. It's October 12th, 2012, and this is episode number 21. So you could find it at extremehealthradio.com slash 21. Also on that page, you'll find the show notes and the transcription as well. So if you have any questions for our guest, please email them to me, uh, justin at extremehealthradio.com, or you could call our voicemail line, which is 949-391-7363, and I'll play your message to our guest live on the air. And I wanted to let you know this show is brought to you by the Vitamix Blender, which is my favorite blender. It's just an amazing machine. And if you buy it through us, we'll get a little commission and we'll appreciate that. You can check that out at extremehealthradio.com slash Vitamix. I will introduce our guest in just a moment. It's Nadine Artemis. I wanted to tell you about our upcoming show schedule. We've got uh, Ramil Nagel on Monday, and he wrote a book called Cure Tooth Decay. If your doctor or dentist, I should say, is asking you to get a root canal or get a cavity filled and all this kind of stuff, just know that that stuff can be healed naturally through diet. And I would highly encourage you to listen to that show. We've also got Dr. David Steenblock, who's out of Orange County, California, my neck of the woods, doing a lot of great work with ozonating the blood and stem cell therapy and all kinds of great things. So I highly recommend you listen to that show, as well as Marty Gallagher next week talking about fitness and exercise. So that should be a lot of fun. And I wanted to introduce our guest today. I'm really excited about having Nadine Artemis on. She, I could read a whole bio, but that just gets boring. So needless to say, she runs livinglibations.com. She's an awesome lady and she's done a lot of great work in the health field and all of that. So um, I wanted to introduce Nadine Artemis. Thanks, Nadine, for being on today. Thank you. I'm really excited to be here. Oh, great, great. So rumor has it you're out in Ontario somewhere. Yes, deep in the woods in Ontario. <laughs> I've heard about your spread out there. I hear it's pretty, it's pretty amazing. <laughs> Yeah, it is amazing. We moved um, out here about six years ago, and it was definitely, you know, a, a dream of Ron and I, my partner. And uh, when we met, we just really focused on uh, doing all that we could to move out of the city and and here and we you know we looked for the perfect piece of land for two years and we just can't believe what we found. We wanted something that was over a hundred acres and had water. And so we found 177 acres with a private little lake really? that's spring fed and there are no boats. Nobody has access to it unless, you know, you're coming up the driveway. Wow. <laughs> so it's really great. Yeah. That is so cool. So you moved there six years ago. Where were you before that? In Toronto. Okay. Just, you know, just going camping and everything. And I was like, I can't even go camping again. I just need my bed to be in the middle <laughs> of the forest. <laughs> oh, that's so great. And on your on your website, Living Light Basins, you've got all these awesome videos where you're out on the deck. It looks like on a lake and mm -hmm. oh, man, it looks amazing. So where do you get your, you said you had a couple springs on your property? Yeah, the, the lake itself is actually spring fed. There's three lakes in, the, sorry, three springs in the lake. Uh-huh. So the water is really beautiful to swim in. And of course, you know, there's never been any motorboats on it. And then we also have, so far, we found two on our land. Mm -hmm. And then what's really neat about the area that we live in, there's also two in the, in the town. So a lot of people in the community drink spring, spring water, which is awesome. Gosh, that is so amazing. Right now, my wife and I drive out to Lake Hemet, and that takes us about a couple hours to go get our sp spring water, probably more than that. It's a full day thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when we first got here, I mean, even just to have a bath and turn on the tap and even have a bath in well water, I mean, we just felt like the luckiest people on the planet. Oh, my gosh. So do you pipe in your spring water to your house or how do you get it from the spring to your place? Well, we just actually fill up. So we're still filling up, but it, it, we're, we're, you know, working with sort of plumbers that know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and, it, you know, in the next year or so, we hope to um, pipe that in, at least for drinking. Wow, golly. You know, I've, I saw those videos with David Wolf where he 
pipes in his water, his spring water, you know, to his faucet. How cool is that, you know? Yeah, it is awesome. Oh, man. Um, so you, when you first moved there, did you have the, the business, Living Libations, or is that something you started after you moved to uh, where you're at now? Oh, yeah. This is something that I've been doing for 20 years. Um, and then when I met Ron, we just sort of reformulated and because um, it has been something I've been doing on my own mm-hmm. and uh, had gone into a mini retirement just before I met him just to like relax for a year and uh, get lots of fresh ideas. But I've been formulating skincare products since I was 18 years old. Oh, wow. And... Um, And then Ron and I have been doing like the incarnation of living libations for over like for about 10 years, 10, 11 years. I I can't remember exactly when we met. (laughs) Wow. And um, yeah, so it's deep, deep in our beings. That's for sure. So this is just sort of a passion of yours and has been for many, many years. Yeah, the fun thing about, I mean, we had a lot of clients in Toronto and people that really were familiar with our work and a lot of clients internationally too. But the fun thing about um, doing your own business is that we also knew that we would be able to, you know, move to the woods. And that actually just kind of gave us more space on another level to, you know, stock more raw materials and do all that kind of thing and Mm -hmm. just, you know, really love and be inspired where we were to keep. Because I feel like the land just really holds us and it really nurtures me because we work really hard. We're very focused. Uh And um, so the land just nurtures us to just even, you know, create more and do better because it's just fulfilling us all the time. Yeah. And do you do a lot of the survival stuff? Like do you stock up on things and, you know, because you have the (laughs) land and all that? Well, we like to, well, you know, we don't go into that mindset totally. We like to be prepared because, you know, there'll be electrical outages and stuff like that. But also just because we have space and because we're really not into doing errands mm-hmm. and because the village that's nearby is lovely but not uh, set up with health food stores and everything just yet, although Raw Cafe just opened. Mm. So we really just really think ahead and we kind of run the household like we would a business, right? Because every house you have inventory mm-hmm. and you have things going in and things going out. So we just, you know, we built, a co- we do root cellaring, we built a cold storage and we really plan ahead and... Um, we actually do, you know, wholesale all of our groceries with our friends and people that work with us so that everybody can get excellent. Like we just, whoever supplies the health food stores in Toronto, you know, those big trucks come up here and we have every, you know, all the amazing wild foods and organic produce. Wow, that's that's so come. cool. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Ah, oh, man, that's so cool. Do you guys do all the sauerkrauts in the winter and all of that? Yes, we do. We, yeah, we eat sauerkraut all year round. Um, we do a lot of, you know, mushroom picking and wild foraging. And, um, you know, we definitely have a, a tea that we make every day that's with, you know, shaga and uh, tripe and different herbs from the land. And that's always rotating with sort of what's in season. All the, You know, chaga is always in season, really. <laughs> so chaga, I've heard, you know, Daniel Vitalis talk a lot about that. What is the magical or what are the magical qualities of chaga? Well, really, just, it's really, I mean, just this to me tells a lot. You can make a big pot of it Mm -hmm. and you can leave that pot out on your stove for over a week. Um, So, and it doesn't go off, you know, because normally when you mix something with water, it has a short shelf life. So I think that alone to me illustrates its tenacity. Mm -hmm. Um, And David Wolf has a new book out. He just launched it last month and it's all on Shaga. And it's really a supportive for immune it's a general tonic. It's just great. It's like a general tonic. It's like a fruiting body from a tree, from the birch trees. And it's, it's a great thing for the immune system. Wow, yeah. I've been doing reishi lately, but I, I'm not as lucky as you where I can go out and pick shaga. That's so cool. That is just so amazing. I, I get mine from uh, Mountain Rose Herbs. But uh, yeah, to be able to go out in the forest and to you know, pick your shaga and reishi would be just amazing, I think. Yeah, it's really fun. Wow. It just connects you. And of course, you know, there's even, you know, I just feel like we've got, you know, a whole lifetime here and there's just every year, there's just so much so much more depth to go into mm-hmm. and the herbs and the plants and the landscape, you know, they, there's just a lifetime of fun to be had out there. So what is your current diet? Have you been evolving your diet over the years or have you been sticking with any one thing for a while or what's your current uh, dietary 
Sh- well, when I was 18, it was sort of this one moment. It was a short week that I just understood a lot uh, about the way the supermarket's constructed and a way, the way that body care products are created. And that's why that's when I came to really formulate my own products as well as make my own food. Mm-hmm. So since I've been eight, since I was 18, I have not eaten any processed food and I've only ever eaten organic. At that time, I I was vegan and was vegan for a long time, many, 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 many years. Um, and I think that served me well on a lot of levels because I didn't, you know, I wasn't, I was eating organic and I wasn't eating processed food, you know, definitely had the different phases, the macrobiotic phases, did full raw for like six years. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, since then, about a few years ago, really deeply going into oral care research. I have a book called Successful Self-Dentistry, How to Avoid the Dentist Without Ignoring Your Teeth, mm. and really looking at the work of Dr. Weston Price, Dr. Melvin Page, Dr. Hal Huggins. Um, so doing that and having been pregnant and birthed and breastfed my child, Leaf, mm-hmm. uh, I just felt like the bo- my body needed more after being vegan for so long and really looking at what the teeth needs and the teeth need fat-soluble vitamins, vitamins A, D3, and K2. I mean, if we can, you know, summarize it in such a simple way, but they really need the fat solubles. And those aren't from, uh, those are only really found in animal products. So that, mm-hmm. that was just really interesting for me. And I didn't want to just go to... You know, I did, then I sort of went, did a vegetarian thing mm-hmm. with going to, you know, eating grains and stuff again, which I hadn't, but I, I just don't find them that exciting. And feeling that you can't have a full diet just based on like phytic acid grains, you know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. and then it was seeming a bit imbalanced that way. So we do eat um, raw dairy, raw mm-hmm. kefir, and wild game, um, not so into fish because of the mercury. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then everything else is pretty much raw. So that's where we're at now. And it really came out of like that physical thing of like birthing and mm-hmm. feeding another being and seeing what they need and then deeply going into the what, what I could see with the bones and what the bones and the teeth need that just spoke deeply to my being. Um, you know, and when I first became vegan too, uh, there was no... It really, I mean, nobody should be eating factory farmed anything. Right. Um, and I wasn't aware of sort of these, you know, grass fed and wild options. It just seemed like I had to just say no to that whole world for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, quality is very important uh, when you are eating animal products, that they're the highest, highest quality, because otherwise you're not getting what you need from them. Yeah, it's, any- it's critical, especially maybe more critical with the animal products, I, I would think. Did you notice any, any deficiencies in yourself or did you just intuitively change your diet knowing that for the long haul you may need some of these nutrients like K2 and things like that? Yeah, I mean, I didn't uh, have a lot of blood work done. I mean, you have some done when, with the midwife um, the, there was, you know, you know, the bees, the iron, they were kind of normal. They were like low normal mm-hmm. and I haven't had them since checked. So maybe they're back up, but I feel like, you know, maybe I lost a few things, but I definitely gained a lot of things by, by doing that for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel it's, it's been an interesting shift because I really was vegan for so long. Mm-hmm. Um, and I f- find that people that have been that long, they definitely, after 15 years, um, you know, some people start to question it. Some, and I definitely was, you know, in there. So I really understand where people are coming from. And, and I totally get you know, not eating meat on a lot of levels. It still mm-hmm. makes a lot of sense to me yeah. on a lot of levels, you know? Likewise, yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so it's an interesting process. Um, yeah, it's, but you, it's, it definitely have to have the best quality. Yeah, it's tough when you want to, you know, um, have some meat like that, but, you know, you still, you know, have ethical concerns and, you know, I'm, I'm right there with you. I did, you know, not as long as you, I did a 100% the raw vegan thing for seven years and now I'm doing, you know, kind of the same diet you're doing, you know, lots of, you know, some kefirs, some milk kefirs, I'm doing some meats and uh, some raw eggs and things like that. And, um, you know, I feel great, but it's funny, you know, after seven years of doing the raw vegan thing, I I essentially feel the same as I did then. I just feel really good. So, um, but, you know, I was looking at for myself, like what, what's going to happen in 20, 30 years if I 
take out, you know, a whole food group essentially, you know, you know, what's going to happen after 20, 30 years of eating that way. And that's kind of was my motivation at least, you know. Oh, for sure. And then also to, to really just see that nobody from birth to death has, has been a vegan and mm-hmm. that deficiencies do show up, but there are great things about the vegan diet. Um, as well, but then I think we can get a lot of grain dependency, especially if we're not raw. Mm-hmm. And you know, and I re- I just really get where people are coming from. Right, right. And I yeah. saw your. Uh, I was at your. My wife and I went to the women's wellness conference. Uh, oh, cool! I think I <laughs> said about a year ago. I think it was the f- very first one, and uh, your speech was really, really cool. Are you speaking there again this year? Yes, I am. So that'll be really fun. Um, something that also is coming up for us because you reminded me because you're going to be interviewing Ramil Neg- Nagel next mm-hmm. week, mm-hmm. and he I just interviewed him myself, which was really fun because I haven't really interviewed anybody before. Um, okay. <laughs> but uh, we have this is like the first time I've ever mentioned this. So at the end of no- oh, November, we will be conducting, holding whatever you call it, a tooth summit. Oh, really? Yeah, it's going to be awesome. It's the Optimal Oral and Tooth Health Summit, and it'll be about 10 days of speakers. I've, I've been interviewing Dr. Hal Huggins, um, Dr. Stuart Nanali, Dr. Lena Garcia. She's uh, Dr. Mercola's dentist. Uh-huh. And it's just awesome. Um, it's going to be really good. And I really wanted to go into depth on a lot of issues. Wow. Wow. That's a, yeah. That's so great. Those... Wow, you know, and when people start realizing, you know, the that teeth are so much more than what we think. Because I never took care of my teeth, even when I was, you know, doing the raw vegan thing. Because you know, it's a hassle. You have to brush your teeth, and you have to do all these things, and <laughs> you know, and, and and really, you know, when you're younger, you don't think about your teeth and and how they relate to disease. But once I started learning from David Wolf and others how the teeth really affect every organ in the body I mean it's just as you know I mean it's just so now I treat my teeth like oh gold you know it's just a total 180 degree shift you know yeah it's amazing and what they are too is if there if there is um, you know imbalance in the mouth if you're seeing things with your gums or your teeth I mean that is reflecting that's letting you know if it's the gums there's issues with tissues and if it's the teeth then that's like telling you what the state the condition of your bones are in so our teeth are just deeply deeply systemically related to our entire body mm-hmm. and I know um, if everybody's sort of been raised in North American cultures we do feel a bit separate from our teeth it's just the way we were kind of raised and by going to the dentist, there's been this whole protocol that's been set up that the teeth are a bit separate from the body and that they're not alive. Mm-hmm. But the teeth are completely capable of, of regenerating, regenerating the enamel. The gums can regenerate. I'm not saying that you can grow an entirely new tooth, mm-hmm. but you can halt decay. You can heal cavities. You can heal the gum tissue. So they're alive and they're a part of the body. Now, I'm wondering if uh, they're able to grow like a little kind of root pulp of a, of a tooth and maybe possibly regrow teeth in the future. Do you think it's possible that they'll be able to regrow a, an entire tooth from a pulp? What's going on with regrown teeth is stem cells. So this is an awesome area mm. of research. And Dr. Stuart Nanali thinks that there will be uh, the capability of actually growing a whole full new tooth in about five years. Wow. Yeah, I've, I've been to him and he's, he's an amazing guy, but wow, I'd never heard him say that. That's crazy. Yeah, isn't that awesome? Wow, that is just, so that would negate the, the need for zirconium implants and things like that. Yeah, exactly. And if you are having a tooth extracted, um, you could send that to a stem cell bank and have it kept there because it's a good base of stem cells and then they could use that later on. Wow, that is just so amazing. I can't, uh, you know, science and it's so amazing what they'll they'll be able to do. And so the teeth, I want to talk a little bit more about the teeth as well and maybe your <laughs> summit as well. Um, we got to take a quick break here for a minute and run an ad but uh, when we get back I'd like to talk with you more about the teeth and oral care Uh, we are with Nadine Artemis from livinglibations.com we'll be right back after this message 
Hi, this is Kate. Thanks for listening. I want to tell you about this product called Heal Your Face by Marcus Rothkranz. You can find it at extremehealthradio.com slash wrinkles. It's 204 pages, paperback or ebook. And if you're like me, you probably didn't know that all of our areas of our face correspond to specific organs in our body. And you can stop spending hundreds of dollars per year covering up symptoms with your aging face with creams and lotions and ointments, plastic surgery, things that just aren't going to work. If you learn how to heal your organs from the inside out, your face is going to reflect that too. For $25, you can't go wrong if you've always wanted that beautiful skin and actually heal the cause of it, not just keep using creams and wasting your money. you got to heal your organs and Heal Your Face is based off of 4,000 years of Chinese medicine. The book tells you what certain organs are connected to certain parts of the body. It even gives you full color photos on what causes poor organ health and most importantly, a step-by-step instruction on what to do about it. The outer you is just a reflection of the inner you. You can find it at extremehealthradio.com slash wrinkles. Okay, we are with Nadine Artemis from livinglibations.com and uh, I wanted to stay on this tooth thing for a little, for just a few minutes if that's uh, if you don't mind. Um, so the teeth are connected to is each tooth connected to a specific organ? Is that kind of how the Chinese and the Germans have determined that? Yes, there, there is, each tooth is connected to each of the organs and there's different t- um, charts that you can do. I have even a chart on my book and I have it up on, the, on, our, on our Facebook page mm-hmm. for a successful self-dentistry. So you can map that out. But also, you don't have to always get into the specifics and you can just know that the um, teeth are connected to every single organ and gland in the body via the bloodstream. So any infection that the mouth harbors affects our health. So with root canals, um, Dr. Hal Huggins and Dr. Stuart Nanali have an um, article coming out in the Orthomolecular Journal of Medicine, I think this month. Mm-hmm. And they took about 80 root canals and they were perfect root canals the person wasn't experiencing any pain they were like textbook perfect Mm -hmm. Um, and they sent those to the lab and as they suspected each root canal was harboring a lot of bacteria 50% of those were harboring severe forms of bacteria like deathly necrotic bacteria and they're finding old diseases in there too like leprosy and uh, just really old, you know, gnarly diseases. Mm. And they both, you know, believe that with things like root canals in our mouth, if you're experiencing, you know, a a devastated immune system, if you have MS or or some autoimmune thing, rheumatoid arthritis, um, you know, all those ones that the doctors, like you just can't get out of bed and the doctors don't really know what's going on with you. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, those kind of things, they're really connected to root canals. And uh, Dr. Hal Huggins was also mentioning that 99% of women that have breast cancer also have a root canal in that same side of their body. Um, For those that don't know, uh, Dr. Stuart Nunley, I think his website is healthysmilesforlife.com and um, Dr. Huggins is, I think it's uh, hugginsappliedhealing.com. But yeah. Um, yeah, I've heard of those studies as well, and it's just it almost shocks you that I, th- I think there was a doctor in Ecuador, uh, Bob Dowling, who was making those connections. Yeah, so I was hearing from Doctor Bob or what's his name, uh, Doctor Bob Dowling, that uh, he claims that all cancers are caused by root, uh, root canals and, t- and oral pathology. But uh, you know, regardless if he's right or wrong, it's still pretty fascinating that I mean, you would never hear in mainstream media if you have cancer, you know, look at your teeth, would you? Oh, yeah, never. Never. And then we haven't even really brought up extractions, Mm -hmm. (laughs) which is um, any site where there's been an extraction, the um, like a wisdom tooth, the periodontal ligament is left in there and the gum, the gum heals up over that. Mm -hmm. And that's akin to leaving the placenta in the body after somebody has given birth. So that rots under the gum line and that creates what is known as a cavitation in the jaw line. Mm -hmm. And these don't always show up in x-rays. And then that is another area where you're going to get harboring, you know, infection and disease because it can't, the blood can't get in there and circulate. So, yeah, Dr. Hal Huggins uh, feels very, you know, strongly about this. And he's been studying people's blood for 40 years. So, he's seeing the effects 
of how when people move, uh, remove these things or get them cleared up and how their immune system returns. Wow. And do you, um, do you have personally any cavitations or wisdom teeth removals from, you know, back, back when you were younger? Yeah, I have no root canals, which I'm thankful for. And I had my mercury fillings removed when I was 20 because this is how long I've been looking into dentistry. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know, it didn't take me too long. I was just like, as soon as I understood mercury, I was like, hey, we got to get those out of the body. Mm -hmm. Um, I haven't, I have had three wisdom teeth removed Mm -hmm. and I haven't checked them yet, but you know, it's it's definitely when I will at some point when I find that I need to go to a dentist I'll I'll have them checked out and they don't show up in an x-ray so what can simply be done is there's a tiny tiny incision that's made in the gum line and then if the instrument falls through and is sinking into the jawbone then they know that there's um, a cavitation there and then that can be cleaned out and removed and then the gum heals back over that so that's not too it's not too complicated of a procedure and you definitely want to be going to a biological dentist that has been trained in the proper cr- protocols for all of these things and if you do bring up cavitation to your regular dentist they'll definitely be looking at you cross-eyed <laughs> yeah I've, I've done that and it doesn't work <laughs> yeah it doesn't I went to but, uh I, went, I actually went to a long time ago before I knew anything about health um, I'm in Southern California and I drove down to Mexico because you know it's cheap and I, I had my root canal done there and I still have it so I've, I've got to get that thing taken care of, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's so cool, though, that you went to see um, see Dr. Nun- Nunley in Texas. Yeah, he's a great, great guy. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I highly recommend him. He's, he's really, really good. And so he was a part of your summit that you did. Yeah, so he was part of our interviews, and that's coming out at the end of November, and it's totally free. And I found him to be a really compassionate, you know, wise man. And he has an interesting story, too, because he he had thought himself a holistic dentist. And so he had been removing mercury for people for about two decades and then found himself with mercury poisoning. And so much so that he found, like, you know, stepping up onto a curb was not was a challenge and he couldn't do it so he was about to actually give up dentistry and somebody had suggested that he call Hal Huggins and follow Hal Huggins protocol and Hal said to him do you have any cavitations we have to remove those first and I'll meet you at my clinic in Montreal and uh, he did the protocol he did a lot of saunas to remove the mercury and you know, it was a slower process over two, two, three years. Um, but now, of course, he's practicing dentistry and he's deeper than holistic. He's, you know, biological revisionist dentist and he runs triathlons. Wow. And he was uh, he couldn't even walk at, at one point. Yeah. Yeah. So oh. it's pretty amazing. And it's interesting, too. I mean, we, it's I wonder, you know, how many dentists are functioning mm-hmm. with a lot of mercury toxicity. It's actually... Um, I forget who in the summit was saying, but it's it's a profession with a lot of divorce rates, a lot of suicides. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just interesting because they're dealing with a lot of um, chemicals and a lot of bacteria. Yeah, I think it might be similar to being an airline pilot, where you do good for sixty, you know, sixty five years, and then it all comes crashing down at the end. You know. Right. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. So, um, you know, I was on your website actually, and I I have to ask you about this product that looks really, really interesting. Um, sure. It is called the Salt Inhaler, and I was looking at your uh, your video on that, and what a cool thing to have while you're traveling. Can you talk a little bit about that salt inhaler? Yeah, it is awesome. I I um I heard of them, so I got one, and it's interest. They're, they're out there, and they're called salt, salt pipes, salt inhalers, and they're interesting. And they have salt in them, and then you are to inhale the salt, so to speak. And um, like you know, you don't get salt in you, but you're inhaling that fume of it, and it clears up uh, breathing disorders and asthma. However. It was interesting, but it doesn't really come alive until you add those essential oils to the salts. I mean, then it's amazing. Then it takes it to like a whole new world. So, um, and I got the opportunity to try it on the plane too, and I just loved it. So, you just put your mouth around it, Mm -hmm. um, and then you put essential oils in the bottom, and it doesn't take much. You could do like eight to ten drops, and that lasts for about two weeks in its potency. 
And you could also do one nostril breathing where you're doing, you know, putting out to a nose and then covering it. We have a video on that. And you just feel like depths of your body and your brain because you can feel those essential oil molecules traveling all throughout the sinuses or deep into your belly. And And essential oils, they are all antibacterial, antifungal, and antiviral. They cl- clear and kill airborne bacteria. So to have that kind of tool with you while you're traveling or visiting somebody in the hospital or just watching a film at home and you want to give your system a boost or you actually you know, are having allergies, an asthma issue, or a cold, it is a wonderful tool. And so we're so happy to have them. And I formulated some awesome blends to go to go with them. That is so, so great. It would be great because I go to Australia from time to time and you know those flights. Last time I was there three or four years ago, I got so sick off that flight. It was just, Mm -hmm. you know, I bet this thing would be a great thing. So do you uh, keep the salt in there indefinitely or do you get salt, you know, you refill the salt and all of that? Yeah, you can refill the salt. They say like once, you know, once or twice a year. So it's very low maintenance. And then you just keep topping up the essential oils, which just adds such an amazing dimension to to the experience. Wow, that's great. So now essential oils, are they, is the idea behind, <clears throat> excuse me, essential oils similar or I should say opposite to homeopathy where it's very concentrated? Is that the idea behind essential oils? Yeah, in, in essence, so to speak. Yeah, because the homeopath thick remedy is a dilution Mm -hmm. and that goes into like a hundred you know hundred percent a thousand percent dilution essential oils are so concentrated and so potent that they're a hundred to a thousand times more concentrated than the plant matter Mm -hmm. what i also find completely fascinating about essential oils is that they they also work with the senses so it not like i love herbs i love homeopathy but what you get with the essential oil is this other dimension with with smell and these scent and these molecules Mm -hmm. which you know it's been sort of seen like a kind of hallmark gift thing a potpourri like oh you know a glade air freshener like (laughs) they've they can go into that realm and be like oh that's like a girl thing um however they are all if they're real and genuine authentic distillations they are extremely potent medicine and um wow. they have they they work with molecules on a molecular level so when you inhale them you're you're sending those molecules into your hypothalamus and then that's communicating with the rest of your body it's going into your lungs it's going into the blood vessels when you apply it transdermally to the skin, it's doing the same thing. And so it's communicating with your body. It inhibits uh, viruses from repeating themselves in the cell receptor sites. Um, they, because they're working on that aroma level, they're able to work with the limbic brain and the hypothalamus. So they're able to also affect um, memory, moods, emotions. So there's a physiological aspect. And then there's also this more real and tangible emotional aspect as well wow that's just it's amazing how little you need because i've you know at your women's wellness conference you're talking about using you know just a drop of something and you know Mm -hmm. in in a drop you know if you if you have rose how many rose petals or rose buds would be in a drop the steam distilled rose auto has over 80 roses in one drop of oil and over 500 bioactive substances so say that again 80 rose <laughs> buds in one yeah, drop. heads like rose heads make one drop of the rose auto to steam steam distilled essential wow. oil wow that is just amazing how do they do that Yeah, well, it's an amazing, amazing ancient process that was developed, you know, thousands of years ago, and nobody's really improved upon it since then because it's sort of in its perfection. But you know, ancient Egypt and and uh, countries like Pakistan and um, Turkey, they were working with uh, distilling the essences thousands of years ago. Wow! And so, in that talk that uh, that you gave at the Women's Wellness Conference, you mentioned you were talking about you know cleaning out your your uh, cabinet and your bathroom and you know replacing them with more natural things so what are some of the problems that you see with things like colognes and perfumes and deodorants that people use 
you know, if they're not really getting good stuff, what, what are some of the issues that could arise out of using those kinds of uh, products? So many. <laughs> well, it's it's amazing. I think too with something even like perfume, cologne, fragrance. The the amazing thing is is that way back in the day, thousands of years ago, it was created to purify the spirit and purify people and used as medicine. So if people had colds or illnesses or viruses, they would use what was perf- uh, perfume to clear that out. And that's because these substances in their real form are good for the immune system. They are antifungal, antiviral, antibacterial, anti-inflammatory. What you have going on now with commercial drugstore, department store perfumes and colognes is something that's you know a detriment to the immune system. It contains petroleum and, and the word fragrance on a cream, like so if it's a, the fragrance is on the label but it's part of a cream or a shampoo or whatever Mm -hmm. that one word fragrance that one ingredient can contain up to a thousand ingredients that are not listed on the label wow and not and and there's no legal um ramifications or or uh, pressure to to label those things no and it's like it's like the food industry you know you can get a can of soup and then if there's cheese in it um, there's not the ingredients of the cheese mm-hmm. or, you know, whatever, whatever's in soup these days, or, you know what I mean? Processed food. Right. There's the one ingredient, but you don't get the secondary ingredients. The, the, um, I'll send you a list actually, uh, an, an article I just did on deciphering cosmetic codes and in the ingredients you can live without. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them are fairly common. Like I think that people, especially your, the people that are listening to your show would know about like sulfates, paraben, sodium benzoate, Mm -hmm. um, PEG, F, D, and C colors, alcohol, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, And paraben, for example, is they don't say it causes cancer, but it is showing up in uh, like, I think somewhere between 90%, maybe even a hundred percent of all the breast tissue sampled for people that have breast cancer. An interesting thing about sodium benzoate, for example, is that could be right at the end of an ingredient list on something that's more natural because we know at the health food store you'll have that whole row of pseudo-natural products. Mm -hmm. Well, that's an interesting one because... um, you know, it's it's uh, it's added to products to prevent from spoiling. But interestingly, when it's mixed with vitamin C, so the vitamin C in your body, or perhaps even the ascorbic acid in a product, when it's mixed with sodium benzoate, you actually get um, a known carcinogen in your body. So you're kind of making it in your own body uh-huh. when you're applying. And we we also have to really know. I think we see our org our skin. Similar to the teeth in a way, we have a bit of a disconnection because I think because the skin, we can see it and feel it. We think it's like tough or something, (laughs) but it's a great way of absorbing things. And what we absorb through the skin, we absorb more than eating. So putting on your cream, your toxic cream is more detrimental than eating it because with eating things, you have uh, the kidneys, the liver, the digestive enzymes, the saliva, and the whole digestive process to break it down. Mm Mm-hmm. But the skin, it goes right into the bloodstream. So that's a great thing if you want to, you know, use iodine on your skin or essential oils that can boost your immune system. But when we're using chemicals, we've got to know we're drinking it up. The other interesting thing about um, natural, a lot of natural products that are manufactured is that you'll see things that look so great on the label like organic calendula extract or green tea extract or wheat protein extract or Edelweiss extract. And what's going on with that is what is not listed and how they're purchased as a raw material to manufacture Mm -hmm. is they include glycerin preserved with potassium sorbate and sodium benzoate and that is not on the label wow gee so yeah it's really a matter of if people are going to buy those kinds of products they got to really look into these things and you know figure out what you know natural flavoring is or um, yeah. yeah, and we're, yeah, and really, what things mean, and I think we also have to know. I think at this day and age, is if there is a like, yes, we can buy food and cosmetics at the health food store, but if we are buying like a loaf of bread at the health food store or a prepared food, mm-hmm. even though the label reads okay, we have to know it's like been manufactured, and there's probably stuff going on that we don't know about. You know, even even learning that like. 
all those products like I think Cashy or I don't this was ones that then we find out oh they're owned by like major GMO companies and mm. and so you know it's like and then we find you can find out things like Tom's of Maine is owned by I can't remember Clorox or Colgate or no, I can't remember. So don't quote me on that. But you'll find a lot of these smaller companies like Burt's Bees or what you think is a small company is now owned by a huge multinational pharmaceutical company. Wow. Yeah, I think it's so important to look at labels and, and to really understand. I think it, it comes down to making distinctions and fi- you know finer and finer distinctions because like you were talking about earlier, uh, you know, you didn't want to eat meat because of the factory farming, but then when you start looking into it, you can start realizing there's healthy, ethical, ethically raised meat, and then there's grass-fed, and then you can even go further. Where are they? Are they watering the grass with uh, ocean minerals? And and uh-huh. uh, and so it, making blanket statements about you know uh, you know some of these things, I think it's I think that's kind of what you're saying is looking deeper into these things. Yes, and know that normally when it's like a, when it's a really not every business, but those huge businesses that you know there's usually like a bottom line and there's like a, some kind of crazy profit margin mm-hmm. that really when they're not using like the finest ingredients, mm-hmm. they're not putting Rose Auto at you know at twenty thousand dollars a kilo in the product. Yeah, yeah, it's not going to happen. Is it? <laughs> it's not happening, <laughs> especially when synthetic rose oil is like you know twelve dollars a kilo. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's amazing. We'll be right back. We got to take a short break, uh, but we're with Nadine Artemis from LivingLibations dot com, and uh, we'll have those links and a link to her Facebook page and all of that on uh, this show page. So um, we'll be right back with Nadine Artemis. I hope you're enjoying the interview so far and getting a lot out of it. I just wanted to tell you really quickly about a program by Chris Kresser called The Healthy Baby Code. And if you haven't heard of Chris Kresser, he's got a blog called chriskresser.com. And he's put together an amazing course on how to have a healthy baby and how to avoid things like autism and childhood diseases. And, you know, a lot of kids get leukemia these days. And it's just, you know, childhood disease is rampant and if you're looking to avoid all that and to have the healthiest baby possible definitely check out the healthy baby code you can find it at extremehealthradio.com slash baby code and it comes with about five and a half hours of video uh, presentations it comes with audio presentations so you can download them to your iPod it's got hundreds of pages of resources materials an ebook and bonus files you get all kinds of things like cheat sheets meal plans how to to breastfeed, how long to breastfeed, natural birthing. He's got the whole thing just covered from A to Z in this course. So I highly recommend if you're looking to get pregnant or if you already are pregnant, you got to check this out. It's the Healthy Baby Code by Chris Kresser. And again, you can find it at extremehealthradio.com slash baby code. Okay, we are with uh, Nadine Artemis from Living Libations. And uh, Nadine, I wanted to... I wanted to read something to you. I had a a, a, um, a PDF on our website it's from Holda Clark, and mm. it's called New Concepts. And um, there, in the bottom, at the bottom of that uh, PDF file, there's uh, something where she talks about seven essential oils to kill tapeworms. And I wanted to read this to you and see see what your thoughts are on this. Mm-hmm. Um, she says uh, seven essential o- essential oils to kill tapeworms: sage, thyme, cardamom coriander, caraway seed, fennel, allspice. And then she says, put two drops of each oil into an empty capsule, swallow immediately, take twice daily for three days. Watch for the tapeworm to exit with a bowel (laughs) movement. Use a synchrometer for this. Test in colon or bile ducts several times or more. For people over 200 pounds, use three drops of each oil three times a day for three days. have you ever done, you know, used essential oils? And what do you think about, you know, you know, f- to get rid of tapeworms? And what do you think about those, um, those essential oils? Well, I've actually made that formula for a few people. And they said it has worked, including, and then Patrick Tempone even did it to himself and had success with it. Um, so I think it's a great formula. And those are, I mean, 
you know, they're, they're all, again, all essential oils, antifungal, antibacterial, antiviral, those in particular, especially those ones that we know of as carminative and digestive ones mm-hmm. that we would use in food prep, like the ones you mentioned, sage, thyme, cardamom, caraway, etc. Mm-hmm. Um, those kind of oils are even, are really potent at antiviral, antiparasitical. I mean, I haven't included all the antis in, in the oils, but they're mm-hmm. definitely potent. And what I would do with that is I would make up a blend of those oils in equal parts in a five mil bottle Mm -hmm. or actually in like a 10 mil bottle and just add like do a add um 50 percent essential oil i mean sorry take your 50 percent essential oils and 50 percent of a beautiful organic olive oil okay and then in your capsule actually then do four drops and um and then you can you can use an empty capsule or if you have a great herb that you love um you can just open that up and pop in the four drops and put the cap back on the capsule and do it that way the reason why you're putting it in a capsule is so you can get those essential oils deeper into the intestines Mm -hmm. rather than just doing it sublingually okay so that sends it deeper in wow that's pretty pretty amazing I'd like to try that one day. I've never, never tried that. But so, if someone wanted to buy those essential oils, um, do you? So you sell them individually, or you could make a blend for people, or how does that work? Yeah, we sell them individually, so people can do up their own, and uh, you do it that way. I have made it up before too, but we don't have the that listing on our site. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And so you're, the you're, tape es- blend. <laughs> <laughs> so your essential oils, you know, a lot of times when you go to the store and get essential oils, um, could there be problems or, you know, things that are either in the product that are not labeled or things that, you know, aren't in the product where they say that they are, or are there issues with buying essential oils? In, yeah, in there's a lot of weird things that go on with the essential oil industry. Um, cause sometimes, you know, just they want people to want it cheaper, not people like, the, but I think the industry part like cheaper or they'll, they'll take out a component like citronella mm-hmm. and then make it like which is found in many different types of oil like lemongrass and then isolate that and make it into something or menthol is an isolate of the actual essential oil of peppermint Mm -hmm. so there's a lot of adulteration dilution and fiddling around in in labs so there's that and then there's the quality of the soil the growing the the picking and the distilling i've been working with distillers around the world ones that i have personally hand selected for over 20 years Mm -hmm. and they're more artisan distillers or they're wild crafting they're doing organic growing they're fourth fifth generation distillers Mm -hmm. some essential oils i contract distill some essential oils i have to reserve two years in advance Mm -hmm. um so there's that kind of thing going on. And then you could also have an essential oil business and just buy ingredients from a food and flavor warehouse in New Jersey <laughs> wow. and just bring in the barrels and then put it into five mil bottles. So there's a lot of things on quality. Um, you can read about that on a really informative site called cropwatch.org. Oh, okay. Lots of great things on the, on the ethical and quality side of it. So you definitely want genuine and authentic essential oils. Mm-hmm. Um, essential oils will say, you know, do not use internally. So there's a lot of stuff that goes on. And of course, they say don't take internally because they are regulated more as a cosmetic ingredient, um, mm-hmm. which is actually fine because then there's a lot of issues going on with herbs and, you know, and that whole industry and um, patents. So right. I think it's fine to leave it in the cosmetic realm mm-hmm. and for skin care realm, but also know that it's mo- the majority of the world's essential oils are, are produced for the food and flavor industry. Mm-hmm. So they're used to, you know, flavor cigarettes and liqueurs and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so when, if you want to use essential oils internally, no, it's a drop at a time and you're going to be diluting it with something mm-hmm. like honey or an, or an oil. Mm-hmm. And then there's ways of either you're encapsulating it people there's also ways to do it with doing suppositories mm-hmm. so it's a, really there's a whole art to it and you have to be sure of the quality um my friend dr kurt schnaubelt has a couple of books out actually three really great ones mm-hmm. um plant intelligence of essential oils medical aromatherapy and advanced aromatherapy those are all excellent books that really map out recipes and dosages and percentages for an internal use oh wow that's fascinating so I wanted to ask you too on your, you know, some of your protocols that you do for your face. You know, do you do you do uh, makeups and you know traditional stuff, or do you kind of make your own, or what what kinds of uh, products do you use 
on your face, you know, on a daily basis? Well, I've been making my own skincare for over 20 years, so I use all of my own things, and we we make everything that you want for the body from shaving cream not that i use that on my face <laughs> from deodorant to shaving cream to we have a whole oral care range to perfumes and i go really deeply into it because i feel like once people have discovered living libations they kind of don't want to go anywhere else so i've really committed to really making sure that we've covered every aspect of the body and i keep it we have a lot of options because mm-hmm. um, there's a lot of creativity here but you can really keep it simple we have one product called the sea buckthorn best can ever that you can that men and women can use children can use you can use it on your body you can use it to cleanse your face wash your face and moisturize your face so really you could just narrow it down to one bottle and that's what a lot of people do because it's time to bring back simplicity you know we don't need 50 flavors of shampoo Mm -hmm. Uh, you know it's and there's a lot of hype about skin type which is is pretty much just a creation of capitalism Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know you don't want to have an oily t-zone and then dry skin you want to bring all of your skin into balance Mm -hmm. and that's sort of the premises that we work with and um you know it's really a whole apothecary here and just a banquet of beautiful things for from creams to lotions and there's just such a sensuality and a beauty that the botanicals offer Mm -hmm. and uh we just love making really the best that we can do and the best things that we can make for taking care of the skin and when you feed the skin the right things and not feeding them toxic things you really skin can improve so much right right and so i know you have something uh called poetic pits uh for your armpits Uh, what's up with everyone's smelly armpits i mean are they uh is it is a result of their diet or, or what's going on with you know why people's you know some people have really bad bo but some people you know sweat and it doesn't smell that bad yeah, I think it's a lot of things. It definitely has to do with what's going on internally, what type of clothing we're wearing, if, if we have synthetic fibers. And also our, our armpits, you know, haven't really seen a lot of sunshine lately. I think that's a great thing, too. If you're ever out in the sun, let your armpits have some sunlight. It's very antibacterial and antifungal. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, a lot of people use our poetic pits because they may have to, so to speak, but also because it just actually enhances mm-hmm. the way that you smell, the, the beautiful formulas, which are actually, so we call it a deodorant, but really it's not even comparable to anything that's been made before. And it's the really simple blends made with sandalwood as the base. So there's nothing diluting it. And then other essential oils to accent and give other sort of flavors so to speak Mm -hmm. and they inter they're also antibacterial and then they intermingle with your own aroma and people find not only that it works and they smell good but that people you know kind of follow them (laughs) it's kind of like pied piper for your pets and people will be like (laughs) after yoga class be like oh my god what are you wearing you smell so good Uh, (laughs) that's funny so uh, so how long would would a you know a bottle of that last you know let's say you apply a couple times a day yeah, well, you only really need one stroke until your next shower. So you don't even need to do it a couple times a day oh, okay. unless you feel like it or you're going out or something special is going on. Okay. Um, and so, and then some people, of course, then put it on other parts of their body. But a small bottle lasts any, like it depends on the person, but from, from three to nine months, depending on who you are and oh, how man. you use it. Wow, that is so great. I mean, that's... Gosh, that's so great. It's so cost effective, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's so people are like, oh my God, that's the price of deodorant. But again, you have to think this isn't, you know, this isn't a uh, secret. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. <laughs> so I got an email in, um, in, in, you know, knowing that you were going to be on. And I won't read the whole thing because it's pretty long. But she, uh, she wanted to know about stretch marks. And she, wanted, she was asking, what are some ways uh, to minimize her stretch marks? She's newly pregnant and, uh, you know, she just doesn't want to get those big stretch marks. And so what, what kinds of things can she do? Well, the product I mentioned, the Sea Buckthorn Best Skin Ever, which is really the one bottle that, that can do everything, it, it's amazing for stretch marks. And every nobody that's used it has ever gotten a stretch mark. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So, so there what, you go. So what done. kinds of things would you do? <laughs> <laughs> done, complete. Um, so what kinds of things would you do for diet and stretch marks? Would you put anything else maybe on your skin too? I've heard... David Wolf talk about cacao butter and things like that. I'm not sure how effective that is, but 
Uh, what, cacao, what other cacao butter is okay, but I think you need the other potent essential oils and the sea buckthorn because the essential oils can really, really help with the skin and, and help. And then there's also, you know, you can work with, uh, you can, and then one woman did her breast and not the other one. And it was funny because she got stretch marks on one breast, but really it's, it's, you can make up your own blend, but you need more than the, than just a lubricant, which is what the cacao butter would be. I mean, it would certainly be better than nothing. Mm -hmm. And then dietary, I mean, which this would be advice for any time of your life or, and it would be men, women, teenager or 60 year old. Mm -hmm. You really, with diet, you have to have to never, ever, ever eat um, vegetable oils, processed rancid oils. That's so key we can't be eating deranged rancid fat mm -hmm. because and a key thing for that is that the skin cells are made up exclusively of omega-6 and when we eat omega-6 that comes in the form of mazola canola soy those are the vegetable oils and i'm talking about seed oils like chia pumpkin hemp mm -hmm. i'm talking about vegetable oils okay. and when the body consumes those then you know things happen like wrinkles stretch marks and cellulite and that would be number one anti-aging thing to avoid. So the bad oils and uh, yeah, it's important for people to, to not eat those. So now I wanted to ask you too, I know we're kind of running up against the clock here. We got a couple more minutes. Um, I wanted to ask you about neti pots and nebulizers and things like that. Uh, can you use your essential oils in... Well, probably not a neti pot, could you? Or could you? you no, know, it would be a bit strong for the mucous membrane, but you can use something like a hydrosol, which is a plant distillate. So um, sometimes we get in a frankincense water, which is is the hydrosol. It's the water soluble components of the essential oil left over from the process of distillation. Okay. Or rose water, which people might be familiar with. Um, otherwise, it would be too stingy. Um, and the nebulizers, it would be great, but it would kind of gum up the machine. So for that, you would also want to use the hydrosols. But that's where the, the salt inhalers are fun because that way you can totally go fully with the essential oils. Wow, that's so great. That's so great. So um, do you use your salt inhalers in place of a nebulizer or? Uh, yeah, I do. I do right now. Um, I use the nebulizer for a while and I also like doing the minerals with that, but I find that the salt inhaler is, is really awesome for getting deep into the, into the sinuses. Wow. Fascinating. Gosh, yeah. it's so cool to be able to put one drop of something in and, and you're really getting it into your lungs and deep into your tissues, aren't you? Yes. Mom, and it's better than Daddy smelling it from a bottle. Right, outside. right. Mom, Daddy, the boxes outside. <laughs> Keep it in one second. No problem. So, um, so as we're wrapping up, I know you gotta you gotta get going. Um, but as we're wrapping up, I know you talked about the the uh, summit that you're doing. What kind? In, in what direction are you headed with your with living libations and you know some of your products or plans for the future? Well, we're always. Uh, creating more fun innovative things i don't know how it all happens but we're definitely you know uh, we've got three three new pastes coming out we just made a frankincense toothpaste that's phenomenal and um we're going to be making a neem a neem the neem enamelizer that we make we're going to be making that into a toothpaste okay. and um we have a new ozonated gel and then we also have a clay paste coming up um i'm always scouring the earth to find new be beautiful essences to turn into perfumes um, so we're always growing that way on the home scale uh, we're really deeply working on our edible forest garden which I think will be like a lifelong project nice wow fascinating uh, yeah. Nadine would you mind holding on for just a moment while I close out the show yep sure excellent thank you Okay, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today. I hope you really got a lot of value out of this show and you learned a lot of good things. You can find the show notes for this page at extremehealthradio.com slash 21. I would ask if you uh, found value out of this show and enjoyed it, would you do me a favor and click the like button at the top of the page and follow us on Facebook and Twitter? We really, really, really appreciate that. We're kind of you know, focused on growing the show and relying on you to, do, to help us do that. So don't forget, we also have a store on our website with lots of great products and so please visit our store also 100 percent listener supported so if you'd like to donate please feel free uh, you can donate as little as a dollar and we would greatly greatly appreciate that so thank you everybody 